Hi there. Uh, this morning I stepped down in my office and I uh, noticed my computer was a little bit dirty and I thought, you know, I, I better hit it with some compressed air. And as I sprayed it, I noticed the can getting colder, which I've noticed before. And I thought, geez, uh, I bet you with what I've learned in chemistry, I can figure out why this can of uh, compressed air gets colder when I use it. And I sat down, I started cranking out, I started recording a video and I thought, wait a minute, there's something I'm missing here. But after a little bit of struggle, I think I've got it and hopefully I can present it in a way that makes sense so I can solidify it better in my mind and hopefully teach you something too. So here we go. This is, uh, this is where I started out. The, the, the propellant or the uh, substance that's inside your compressed air is uh, difluoroethene. That's, uh, that's this right here, C2H4F2. And uh, yeah, I went out on uh, Wikipedia. Oh, you know, I left something out here. Uh, I looked up the molar mass for uh, difluoroethene, and uh, you know, I should have had that handy here, and I, I didn't. But oh, yes, I do. <laughs> okay, it has a molar mass of 66.05 grams per mole. 66.05. 66.05. grams per mole. That's supposed to be in there. Okay. Anyway, you get it. All right. So um, I, I took a couple really rough measurements of the can of difluoroethane, the, the com compressed air, the canned air that uh, I use on my computer, and I figured it was probably about a half a liter volume container, just you know measuring the diameter and uh, and the height of the can, making a rough estimate. I uh, guessed at the temperature in my room in, in Celsius. Uh, we'll just say it was. 22 degrees, and then I uh, have right here the universal gas constant, and uh, the original mass I read from the can, it says, is 283, and I wanted to figure out what would happen if I lost 40 grams of the dichloroethane from the canister, what would that do to the overall temperature? So you can guess already this is going to be a problem that has several steps to it, uh, and uh, First, they might not be intuitive if you're just focusing strictly on the gas laws, though the gas laws do matter. Okay, First of all, we know that we're going to have to be dealing in moles. Okay, If we look at the problem uh, at hand, what we've got is um, a, a, a gas, really, right? It's a gas that's inside. It's compressed gas. And the rule we usually use for that is PV equals N, uh, I want that to be a lowercase n, N, R, T, right? Okay. Now, what we don't know here, to begin with, is the original pressure, because we have the volume, we have the N, that is what we're going to get from the mass over here, because we have the molecular mass up here, right? Uh, and I know the temperature from my room, and that's what I'm going to assume the can of compressed air equilibrated to, uh, just sitting there on my desk, right? So here we go. I'm going to uh, start out with uh, making some molar mass conversions. I think we'll do them both so they'll be handy. So the first one is I've got 283 grams of C2H4F2. I'm not going to write that all out. Okay. Now if I multiply that by the molar mass conversion, I know that one mole of that okay, is going to be equal to what? 66.055. 66.05, uh, oh excuse me, can't read my own handwriting there, grams of the same stuff right here, right? So um, these cancel out, right? and uh, we're left with 283 divided by 66. So let's, uh, let's just figure out what that is. Okay, that's 283. 66.05, uh, oops, sorry about that, 05, divide, and that gives us 4.284 moles, we'll say 4.285, okay, so, uh, sorry, don't know what I just did there, but uh, let's undo it, because I'm going to need that number later, 4.285, okay, 4.285, moles, okay, that's my N1, okay, because we're going to run this equation twice, okay, now N2, so I'll just put N1 here, 
and two, we're going to do it the same way, but now we know the steps and we can do it a little bit short. 243 grams divided by 66.05 times a mole. It's going to be equal to 243, 66.05, divide it, and we get 3.679, 3.679 moles, okay? So that's my N2, that's my second one, I'm going to need both of those, so let's, uh, let's just circle them for right now, or square them, whatever, <laughs> there we go, so that one, and that one I need later. Okay, so far so good, right? Now, I can start plugging things into the equation because I have the right uh, format, I believe. Let's do it in a new color, though. Okay, so uh, starting out for pressure one, actually, let's rearrange the equation. We know the volume already, and uh, we're going to switch that. So what I'm going to do with, with our original equation here is I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over uh, V so I can just get the pressure by itself. So P1 is equal to NRT over V. And the V is going to be the same both times, right? Okay, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say P1 is equal to N, which is 4.285 moles. We get a slightly smaller pen there. 4.285 moles times um, R. Okay, R we just that's given. Okay, this is the universal gas constant. And that's going to be 0 0.8206 liter ATMs. I was put an S on the end. I don't know why. Over K mole. This is just good to put there as kind of a a uh, good gut check as to whether you're actually uh, canceling the right units, so I like to put that on. And the last part is, uh, where did my formula go? Temperature, right? Which we said was 22. Now, it'd be a good idea since we're dealing in Kelvin here to use this as Kelvin. So 22 plus, uh, what did I say it was? Oh yeah, let's just do it here. 20, uh, 273.15 plus 22 is going to give me uh, 9, 5, 2, okay. Let's just say 295 and make it easy. Okay, 295K. Normally you'd round at the end, but I just don't want to type in a whole bunch of extra digits. Now all of that for pressure one is going to be divided by the volume of the container, which uh, I said uh, just based on my estimation was 0 0.5 liters. Okay, so setup's done. Now I just need to uh, do the math. So let's pull up the calculator. And, uh, you know, I'm going to draw up that one for now. Uh, so here's my 4.25. I'm going to multiply that times my universal gas constant. Point, oh, I wrote it wrong. 0, 8, 2, 0, 6. I'll go fix that in the, in the document here in just a second. Okay, so that's there. 0 0.08206. Make sure I got that right. I always... I get stuck on that one for some reason. 0, big 206. Yes, okay, that's good. And then uh, 295 Kelvin. Okay, and I multiply them all out. And I'm going to divide that by 0. 0.5. And that puts my pressure at 207. Point, so we'll just put a couple decimals in there for now. 207. 0.44. Now, 207.44 what? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, let's uh, let's do some cancellations and figure out what units we're left with. It looks like, let's see, moles cancel out here. Uh, let's see, uh, kelvins cancel out here, right? Okay. And liters cancel out right here. So our pressure, oops, uh, is. 207.44 ATM. Okay, so we can do that again pretty quickly, right? In fact, maybe just, well, yeah, pressure one. 
Okay, now the second pressure is going to be calculated in exactly the same way. So let's give it a new color. Okay. Actually, uh, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So P2 Wait for it. There we go. P2 is going to be equal to 3.679. I'm not going to write all the units in this time because we know they cancel out now. Okay, times universal gas. Oh, there should have been that zero there, right? Uh, 0 0.08206. It's probably longer than we even need for this. Um, and then what's the temperature? It's going to be the same temperature. We want to find out what the pressure change is once we, uh, you know, once the can reaches the same temperature again, because that'll give us uh, something useful later on. So 295, okay, divided by, okay, um, yeah, same size can, right? 0 0.5. Okay, so P2 is equal to, all right, let's do the math. Uh, I sound way too excited about that, right? I'm, I'm kind of giddy because this took me a little while to figure out. So 3.679, 3 3.679, 0 0.08206 is my second one. Okay. 295, two, oops, 95. Is that right? Yep. Okay, I'm just double checking my numbers before I multiply them. Okay. And now uh, I'm going to divide that by 0.5. And that's our second pressure. Okay, so P2 is going to be 178.12 atm. Okay. So now I've got my two pressures, and that's a good place to be in because, well, I can do something cool with this. And this, this is neat. Okay, so there's my first one. There's my second one. Okay. Now, I kind of got stuck for a little while working on ideal gas law to try and figure this out, but I couldn't do that because uh, you know, I was trying to look at the temperature change from the first one to the second one, and I don't think that's really what you want to do if you're trying to figure out what gets it colder. Think about what makes it colder. The can gets colder because it's losing heat, right? Energy is leaving the system. So we, how do we figure out energy change using pressure? Well, uh, there's one way we can do that. Um, we need to find out what that pressure means, this pressure the can means in joules. We can convert, um, if we have a volume, we can convert the liters times whatever the pressure is and get liter ATMs and that is an easy conversion to, uh, to joules, actually directly to joules, which is very handy, right? So here we go, let's do it. Um, pressure one is uh, or we're looking for the for the energy one actually let's call it that energy one that's when the can is full before we let anything out that's at 283 grams that we saw uh, up above earlier and here I'll show you up there right okay so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to sing isn't that beautiful okay great E1 is equal to okay I got 207.44 207.44 ATMs. I'm going to run out of room. I just realized I need to write smaller. Right? Whoa, nice huge eraser. But let me start over with just a little bit more room over here. Okay, I'm going to multiply those two together. Okay, for my first energy count. So E equals 207.44. ATM times what? Times the volume of the container, right? 0 0.5, let's put it in parentheses, it'll be 0 0.5 liters. Okay, now I, I can multiply those out. Let's do it. Okay. That'll be, um, there's my 207 still left over, that's good. Uh, times 0 0.5, and that gives me 103.72 liters ATM, okay? E one equals 103.72 latums. Okay, those aren't particularly useful to me, so what I'm going to do is say well, one liter ATM 
because that's the unit I want to cancel, is equal to about a hundred and uh, what is it? One hundred and one point three three joules, right? Okay. Now, with that in hand, I can do a little bit of cancellation, right? Because the liter ATMs cancel out, and multiply that by one hundred one point three joules. One hundred one point three joules times, and uh, the the energy in the can before I start spraying is one thousand or ten thousand five hundred. That's a comma, by the way. <laughs> let, me, let me do that again. In fact, let me write down here. E one is going to be equal to ten thousand five hundred and six. Uh, actually, point nine. Let's just say ten thousand five hundred and seven. joules okay so the energy of that pressure inside the can just waiting to burst out which is why you don't toss it in the fire is is this much energy right here okay we can do the exact same thing now for the 178 which was the pressure we determined over here okay so that's going to be 178 how did we do it we said 178 uh, to, it was uh, brain damage times 0.5 uh, liters 0.5 liters right divided or well no let's see times 101.3 okay, I should have just written it out 0.3 times okay now that means e2 actually let's do it in a different color e2 is equal to now I think it's starting to gel together hopefully you see where this is headed 9021 let's say two okay. joules okay does that make sense what's going on is I went from this pressure where I had 204 ATM in the same size container as a half liter container and I went down to this pressure in the same size container and I said what does that come out to an energy and now I can say well my change in energy from spraying out that can of air is equal to actually that should be an e right there is equal to the final energy e2 minus the initial energy from e1 and what that means is I can say my change in energy is equal to this number uh, excuse me this number minus this number right so I've got them both in here. I'm going to switch them though because I want to subtract the initial number. And I get a negative number, which is good. Right? So I say the change in energy, and now I'll go to six figs. Uh, I had three significant, well, actually, uh, I said half a liter even. So I, if I want to be dead on accurate, but it sure is boring, let, let's just pretend I ran uh, with three sig figs all the way through for now. Okay? And uh, that looks like. Mm, 100 and or 14, 1490, 1490 joules, but it's negative, right? So if we look at our little canister here, what's going on is that as the gas went out, so did the energy, right? To the tune of 1490 joules, and that is why the compressed air can gets colder when you use it. Hope that was helpful. Help me a ton. Talk to you later. Bye.